So redirect one was a phase one B uh, trial investigating the combination of teclistamab and telquetamab in patients with relapse of refractory multiple myeloma. So this is actually the first uh, uh, trial uh, in hemato-oncology to look at the combination of two bispecifics uh, ever to be uh, reported. So it was a dose escalation uh, uh, study. The primary objectives were, of course, safety of uh, the combination. Uh, the patients eligible for, eligible for the trial for the study had to have relapse uh, uh, refractory uh, uh, myeloma myeloma, uh, that they uh, were relapsed and refractory to established therapies or intolerant to them, and uh, refractory to their last line of, uh, of therapy. And uh, there was a dose escalation uh, scheme uh, uh, looking at uh, step-up uh, dosing also at each dose level uh, to identify the recommended phase uh, two uh, regimen, the RP2R, and this was uh, 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 selected at uh, teclistamab 3 milligrams per kg and telquetamab 0.8 milligrams per kg. Uh, the study enrolled a total of uh, 93 patients. Uh, of them, 34 were at the RP2R uh, dose. Uh, the patient characteristics were really a very resistant uh, a group of patients. Uh, the median age was uh, 65. Uh, they had four prior lines of therapy, and uh, uh, there was a large enrichment. Uh, over a third of the patients had soft tissue plasmacytoma, which is a very hard to treat uh, a kind of, uh, of myeloma. 75% uh, were, uh, over 75% were uh, triple class uh, uh, refractory, and 90% uh, uh, refractory to the last line of therapy, and uh, over 20% of the patients actually had prior exposure to an anti-BCMA uh, uh, drug. Uh, as far as the safety findings, uh, so the message is that the safety was comparable to that of yeah. monotherapies. Uh, in terms of hemolignancies, the uh, rate of febrile neutropenia was, was low, 12.9%. Uh, uh, CRS occurred in around 76% uh, uh, of the patients, but was uh, almost uh, entirely grade one and two, which occurred early in the, in the treatment, in the step-up dosing, or uh, in uh, the first uh, cycle, and uh, there were no dis deaths or discontinuations due to CRS. 26% of the patients uh, uh, were treated with TOSI uh, to control that. Um, as far as uh, uh, treatment emergent uh, AEs, uh, uh, this was similar, as I said, to the, to the monotherapy. There were six deaths on the study. They were all due to uh, infections, uh, some uh, uh, opportunistic uh, viral infections. Uh, all in all, uh, infections uh, uh, occurred in, uh, uh, in about 80% of the patients, but less than 40% in the RP2R had a, a grade uh, three or four uh, infection. And we think switching to the uh, dosing uh, every 14 days really helped uh, to mitigate uh, some infection. Another important intervention was the uh, administration of IVIG, a supportive uh, measure, and this was done uh, by institutional guidelines. It was not my that is in the protocol, uh, uh, but we know that uh, uh, over 80% of the patients had hypogamma globulinemia, and less than half the, of them received IVIG. So perhaps in the future, this would be a way to uh, handle uh, uh, this infection risk uh, uh, in a better way. Uh, as far as the uh, efficacy, so uh, in this uh, very tough pa patient population in a follow-up of uh, uh, 13.4 uh, months, uh, the overall response rate for the entire population was uh, uh, over 86%. And for the patients uh, treated with RP2R, uh, the response rate was uh, 96%. So this is really unprecedented uh, to compare only to CAR T uh, cells. And the responses were durable. A, a medium uh, a duration of response uh, was uh, was not uh, reached, and uh, uh, they were also uh, really fast. They achieved a uh, uh, first response was uh, around two months, and best response around uh, uh, four months. And uh, focusing on those patients with uh, soft tissue plasma cytoma, we know these are really tough patients uh, to treat. We know that off-the-shelf drugs uh, yield a, a, a response rate between five and forty uh, percent. Uh, and uh, CAR-Ts do, uh, do better as far as overall response, but uh, the, the 
responses don't last, they're not durable. And here, uh, really, we had an 85% uh, overall response rate at the RP2R, over 70% for the entire cohort. So this is really uh, uh, showing the power of this, uh, of this treatment uh, uh, compared to others available when we're testing it on the most uh, difficult uh, patients, and uh, these responses were, were durable. So. Uh, to conclude, the first uh, trial combining uh, two bispecifics uh, ever to be tested in hemato uh, uh, oncology, uh, yielding really uh, excellent uh, efficacy uh, with overall response rates of 96% uh, at the uh, RP2R uh, uh, level. Uh, safety uh, was uh, was manageable, no additive toxicity beyond that of, uh, of monotherapies, particularly uh, exciting results for patients with soft tissue plasma cytoma. Uh, with uh, an overall response rate of 85%. Uh, and based on these encouraging results, so further studies of this combination uh, are, are underway. And uh, an expansion, uh, a cohort of uh, extramedullary disease is going to open in the near future as part of the Redirect 1 uh, trial.